I am a. Uh, oops, taking a trade. Okay, I took it just a little too. Taking a trade back down here to the bottoms. Okay, let's say 25 and a half. All right, and I want to see some fall through down to. I'm gonna put it down here at 24 and a half. Okay. So this is a pullback entry trade at the price broke this area right here to the downside. So I'm going to pull back. So at the price broke this candle here to the downside, coming down, I'm taking the trade, switch over to my four range, taking a trade from the top end of this high volume area on a pullback entry. Um, and I'm looking for price to push lower now. So uh, what you're going to notice in the, if you probably, you're going to see here right after this little clip of this trade here, this trade entry here. Um, there where there's a the video is going to show but my audio wasn't recording so i noticed that and i um went ahead and um recorded over that that that, that audio or excuse me that video piece there in this um is this video here of this trade session recording and this is me uh trading my live trade session of trading the e-mini s&p 500 future so uh sorry about that guys but um Okay, so hopefully we get some fall through now to the downside. Um, so let's see what happens here. Uh, okay. Mm. Yeah, I'm looking for the market to push lower now. Uh, we have a low volume area here, so a price could trade from this area here to this area right here. Okay, so hopefully we go ahead and get the push to the downside here. And uh, price fills more orders here, so. And I, I got, you know, a little topic I want to talk about, about, you know, people ask, when it comes to trading, how much money can you make trading? So I'll talk about that in the um, video segment shortly after this trade uh, here. But yeah, I, uh, again, this is when we trade the E-mini S&P 500 futures. This is future trading with Mike. And um, let's see if we can get filled here on these contracts that I have. Oh, I have two contracts. Sorry about that. Let's, uh, what did I do here? One contract here. Okay, one contract there and second contract right below it. All right. Come on down. Whoops. All right, we're right there at it. Uh, one or two ticks away. Pull them back. This market is driving me crazy. This will be a tough week. I ain't say take take tough, but it may be a slow week because of the um, holiday coming up at the end of this week. So. Be mindful of that and trade accordingly. It is uh, 11.40 right now, so I kind of got my day off a little late to trading this morning. But um, it's okay. And um, price rejected the tops up here, so it pushed lower. And there was some you know, areas in the market here as price was pushing higher where there was... Um, Money resting in the market, if you want to say. Mm. Let's see. Come on, baby. Push on down. So now the price is. Should trade on down, hopefully. It's just making a little double bottom right here. This was a good trade up top here at the failure rejection. Um, have to be careful with that trade. Okay, we just got filled in the first contract. 
Okay, now hopefully price will fall through and hit the second contract. Let's see where we're at. I'm blow the four range chart up and see what we got. And we should get filled here. There's nothing else stopping us really. Look at that, hit my profit target and bounce right off of it. Come on. What the f crap is going on here? All right, got filled. All right, so that's that entry there, okay? And that's probably, this right here is going to be my last trade, guys. Um, I was taking a trade with continuation through the low volume area pretty much down to this area right here after I saw price breaking through this little swing right here, okay? So that's why I took that trade there. And you take that on a pullback. So basically when price broke this red line right here that I had marked right here, I was waiting for price to break this area right here. And then I switch over to my four range. When I pull back up a portion of the high volume area, I take the trade short, okay? And uh, price is um it's it's, it's gonna come down to this area right here, okay? Um, it's already hitting it, matter of fact. So we could push lower and come test this high volume note, okay? All right. So let me go ahead and, and try to, I'm a, you, know, you guys are already watching this now, um, but I'm going in right now to, um, I guess, record my voice voice on that portion of the audio, excuse me, the video that it got messed up. So, all right, guys, continue watching the video and, uh, you know, you guys be safe in the market. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the money aspect of, you know, people ask questions about how much money can you make trading. Okay. All right. All right, guys. So in this portion of the video here, it got um, the audio got cut, uh, or not, or it didn't record. So basically, in this, you know, well, this is future trading with Mike. Okay, this is my channel, guys. I trade the E Mini S and P five hundred futures. It's my live recorded session, and what I'm showing you here now is, um, you know, an area where prices, price, the market was bullish this morning, and price ran up to the forty seven forty area, which is a hidden pivot pretty much in the market, but um, you know, those other pivot of the other, I guess, pivot areas that you want to say, like the round numbers or half numbers. But anyways, what price is doing right now, I'm circling around the high volume area because I'm looking for rejection in this area. And uh so price pushed up a little higher. And this is where traders this is where the institutions are kind of spoofing or 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 uh faking out traders and trying to catch they know that people have their stops sitting up there at around forty seven forty, okay, when the market pushed up. So You'll see that the um what I was waiting for to see was was to see if we got some fall through rejection or failure here because I already noticed that price came down, pushed a little lower, but at the same time, um I was looking for you know some some fall through rejection here. So um so price could have continued pushing higher, but at this point here I started seeing some rejection and uh you know, I knew that price could could possibly push lower, but I was just waiting, patient at this point. And uh, what you'll see is that, that that candle that's forming now is a red candle, and it actually wicks out the top and closes below. So that kind of gave me confirmation right there. When I see setups like that, that is a good valid entry to possibly take a, you know, go short. Okay, so. Okay. All right. So let's see what happens here. But what I want to talk about now is, um, you know, people always ask, "How much money can you make trading?" Well, that is, there is no specific answer to that uh, because. The sky's the limit, you know, but it all surrounds and it's all centered around how much capital you have to trade with and how much you're willing to put on the table to trade uh, each time you enter the market, meaning how many contracts are you willing to buy? How much money are you willing to put into the market? You know, so there's that risk reward type thing to, you know, a uh, factor to where you have to risk something to, to gain reward, right? And that's the thing about trading. So now I'm into the market here and uh, you see me take this trade here. I was waiting for, um, 
you know, some further rejection and we see it here. But, you know, when I first started trading, it was, yeah, I guess I was like more, most people want to make money, you know, and greed steps in. So if, we, if, if, if you're looking to make money over quickly overnight, guys, it ain't just not going to happen because if you think and have your mind set on the money aspect of things, like just trying to make as much as you can trading, then your psyche is going to take control of you. The mental state is going to, um, it's going to, you know, it's going to cause you to uh, not do as well perform when you're trading as you think you're going to do or you should be doing because you let that greed step in the way. And I had to learn that piece. And that's the, I say that's the biggest part, one of the biggest factors in trading is controlling your own um, your mental state. So I went from, you know, I went from, you know, dealing with the greed piece to, and, and, and figuring that part out to uh, figuring out what I really needed to do was not focus on the money part of it, but was focusing more on that I was following my trading plan and sticking with that. And I knew that if I did that, then the money would follow. So it took me a little while to figure that piece out. And then when eventually when I did, that's when I started also becoming profitable with the same at the same sense. But yes, when I first started trading to make two hundred dollars a day, I was okay with that, you know. And when I started doing that consistently, is then that's when I I um you know started seeing well maybe I'll trade an additional contract. And so what a lot of people tend to do is they they go for the full gusto, meaning they whatever they put in their brokerage account, they're willing to risk it all. You know, it's like going to Vegas and playing the playing the the, the tables, and then you putting all your chips on the counter, and you're willing to risk risk it all. That is not how you trade. You know, there's a certain percentage of of money you should be actually entered in the market with. Um, you know, when it comes to how much money you have in your brokerage account, you know. So, um, if you're all you have in your account is five hundred dollars. Then you're going to find it difficult to trade with. I'm gonna be honest with you, because unless you're trading micro futures, um, because in the e-minis, say for instance with the ES, the ES it costs you four hundred dollars a contract. So which means that every time, in order for you to enter the market, you have to have at least four hundred dollars in your account. If you want to trade two contracts, you have to have at least eight hundred dollars in your account. But why take the risk of just having? If you've got eight hundred dollars in your account, why are you going to sit there and, and, and take a trade with two contracts? Because you'll bust your account that, that quick. So, you know, my thing. I, I guess what I'm really trying to say is that if you're going to trade, and let's say you want to, I started approaching when I got wise. I said, okay, twenty five hundred dollars in an account, and even with twenty five hundred dollars in an account, I was trading one contract, say for instance, because it made sense to me. Why well, put more risk at hand? to until i started building up my account um because most of these future contract or instruments are the margin is like 500 dollars a contract some of them thousand dollars a contract some of them 2500 dollars a contract so like i said what that means is that you have to have a certain amount of capital in your account to trade lot sizes contract sizes so if the ES is $400 a contract. You have to have at least $400 in your account to trade one contract. And I would never just put $400 in my account or $500 in my account and just trade that one contract. I mean, you know, if you're testing the market and you have $500 to lose, whatever the case is, you don't mind it, then, then, you know, you know, that's up to you. But in order to safely be able to enter the market um, and trade to make money, then you know, you want to have a safety net sitting in your capital, in your in your account, your brokerage account, to trade off of. You know, it just makes sense because all you be doing is busting your account, putting five hundred dollars in there, taking a bad trade on the ES, and then uh, you lost that five hundred dollars. Whatever the case is, then you have to go back to put more money in your account every single time. So, you know, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is lim limit your headaches and learn how to trade based upon surrounding the capital. Do not, don't ever put, don't ever go in with full gusto and, and trade your full account. You know, whatever percentage you have in there. So, um, I don't know. You know, um, I don't know. Just factor it in. What percent percent you're willing to, to trade against? You know, your your brokerage account. You know, is it is it fifteen twenty percent? Whatever the case is. Um, to me, for me, it's like 
Uh, I believe what I set up was, you know, in trading one contract, like if the instrument was $500, I had $500 margin. What I did was that $2,000 in my account, say for instance, for every $2,000 I had in my account, I was trading one contract. That's what I want. That's what I was willing to risk, you know, because if I lost and I took a bad entry, okay, well, at least I still have more money in my account to where I can get back into the market again at some point, you know, when I saw a setup, whatever the case is, um, to try to recoup that $500 back or whatever it is. Um, but not, not, I'm not saying going in and wait for the for, wait to lose $500. I'm just saying that me, I just, in my mind mentally, I tell myself for every 2000 I have in my brokerage account, I'll trade one contract pretty much, you know? Um, you know, and, and that's just kind of how I stuck with it. I should be trading more lot sizes now, but I'm comfortable with what I do, you know, three contracts, two contracts, whatever the case is. Um, and I, I'm, I probably would step my, my, um, contract and my lot sizes up here in the future, but you know, I'm comfortable. I'm not greedy. You know, I don't really have a set amount I look to make in the market. I just, I, I trade based upon setups that I see that make sense to me. And when I see the rejection or failure, that's what I trade on. So guys, there's, there's no set amount of money that, you know, that, um, I guess you should be looking to make out of the market. You know, in a sense, when I say that is that, having the greed factor or having the need factor of I need to make this amount of money every single day. No, then you're trading for the wrong reason then. You should be trading and basically off the idea of I would like to make this a day. Okay. I would like to make five hundred dollars a day, but today I did two fifty. Okay. I would like to make a thousand dollars a day, but today I did five hundred. So, you know, just be happy and so Basically, make your mind, make things in your mind as simple as possible. Don't worry about what you should be making or need to make. Just and keep and stay focused on the things that are more important at hand. Is waiting to trade around the setups that you see. You know the opportunities you see playing out of uh, unfolding the market. That's what you should be doing, and that's what I do, guys. All right. So that's how I was able to become successful in trading was specifically just doing that. You know. Um, kind of, you know, not worrying so much about what or how much I can make in the market, you know, every single day, and just focusing on what is going on in my charts and what I see. All right. So I'm in this trade now here, you see, so that's, you know, so how much money can I make trading? To me, that doesn't exist because the sky is the limit, but that's one of those things you shouldn't be worried about, you know, um, because if you are, then you're into it for the wrong reason, you know, because at some point you may think you're making a lot of money and then it's that, that same thing, you know, that greed steps in and then you, you start to trade and over trade and then you're busting your account every single time. Trust me, I've seen people do it all day long. All right. So just be safe in trading and think about the things you need to be thinking about and not be worried about, you know, trying to chase money. Chase the idea of chasing the strategies, tra chasing the, the setups that you see, you know, uh, or waiting for the setups, I should say, okay? But either way, uh, right now, you know, I'm taking a trade from the top here, from the sh uh, going short at this notice of the rejection here, and I'm saying that I'm looking for price to come down and test, break through below the 40, I guess 47.34 area, and then test around the, I think it was 47.31 area, and you'll see price, it will come down to that area there. So that's what I was waiting on. Okay. You can see me in the video here talking and the audio was not recording. So price keeps pulling back. Here we're at the area of the, um, the point of control right now. So it's one of those things that you just have to be patient and wait. Um, it is a dangerous area to trade around the point of control. But if you notice rejection, then trade it. You know, notice rejection and understand what the market is doing. And I, like I said, I saw that candle wick out the top of there. It was going back up there to stop traders out. When I saw that, then uh, it the institution went up there, collect that money, and then now they they turned the market back around in a sense and uh, trying to push the market lower. So, um, yeah, that part is it is what it is there. Okay. So let's see what happens here. And at this point, the market is still kind of, you know, pushing and pulling um, around the POC. 
So basically, once it breaks below the area of 38, I'd say safe, not 30, I'm sorry, guys, um, 37 safely, you'd be, you know, it's a big good opportunity to enter the market or a pullback. Okay. So I guess I'm getting up here. I'm getting up here and I'm going to let this trade play out here. And I appreciate you guys. Um, appreciate everyone who's been following the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Those that have been liking the videos. I, I really appreciate that. And um, hopefully, uh, you know, like I always mention, this is just my my um, way of uh, kind of giving back in a sense. I know not, there's not too many people out there that actually live record or, or record their trading sessions and post it and talk about, you know, their entries and things like that. But I have no problem doing that. Okay. So the market is just kind of bouncing back and forth around the POC. So we'll just let this, this trade here play out and hopefully get filled here. So go ahead, guys, continue watching the video. This is, you know, uh, the first entry that I took in today's trading session. So this trade here takes a little, little while to play out because, you know, we're we're around that the POC just bouncing back and forth, guys. That's all it's doing. Uh, the market's bullish, and you gotta look for those areas of you know the rejections there. Uh, you see price um, building volume in this area right now, and um, it could have broke to the upside just as well. But um, you gotta wait for the clear signal of of rejections. What I'm trying to say. When you notice it, then take your entry. At some point here, price 
price comes down and it finally breaks lower and fills my uh, my order. You can see that price stair steps to the upside swinging, making those um, higher highs and higher lows. Well, below the, you know, at the bottom of each swing, there's money sitting there. There's liquidity and, the, and then, you know, prices uh, that's left behind. So the market is going to want to come down there once it, you know, when it, when it finally fails and rejects, it's going to go down there and get that money. The market's going to go down and get that money. So I guess I finally come back to the table here, to my um, desk here, and uh, uh, you know, it's kind of shocked the price didn't already push down, but and uh, push through my profit targets, but still, that's because we're on the PLC, and the market isn't being as bullish as it was this morning. Um, it still had you know potential to potential to. Um, Push higher. So it still could have pushed higher at this point. It sure could have. Mm. This could be a this could be a slow week because of the holiday uh, coming up this week, Thanksgiving week. Um, so I may I'm doing this video now. I have it uploaded. You guys are watching. So um, depending on how the market's moving tomorrow, I'll trade tomorrow. Wednesday, I don't know if I'll trade. Uh, it just depends. But and that's probably that's gonna be it for the week for me. Um, so we'll see what happens. So this will be a short week of trading. All right, let's see. Scrolling back in my charts, looking 
looking at some things from the past. I didn't know the um, at this point I wasn't sure how many trades I'd be able to get into today because of how the market was moving. But I think I was able to take a couple of trades, three or so. So wasn't bad overall. Not too bad. And the point at this point, the market still has not filled my order. And you can see I was sitting in this trade for a while. Hmm. At this, this point, I was up a point, point and a quarter. It's getting quite aggravating because the market was just so slow. When it comes down lower, and uh, Yeah, I'd eventually feel more water.
We got fuel in the first contract there. Price is pushing lower. I'm looking to get filled in that second contract. We're reaching the lows there, or that low, so I, uh, that swing low, so I move my uh, profit target up to go ahead and get filled in this order. All right, got to fill in that second contract. And uh, what I'm explaining here now is looking for, I was um, looking for price to break the area there at uh, 32 and a half to the downside. Okay. Um, and then on a pullback, you know, looking for a continuation for movement to the downside. All right, so it finally breaks through that area, and I'm looking. I believe I can already get into a, a order going short. Once I see some rejection here on the four range, on that pullback. And that's what I was waiting on. Okay, I'm going short. Rejection. Now, um, yeah. Now, I should have waited for the candle to close um, right below what price is at right now. Oh, actually, I was. See what did I do here? Yes, going short. Okay, um, and the close of this candle or hit this red candle. The price is currently, you know, showing right now. You could have went short, come down and break the bottoms down there, that swing low, and then kind of target um, the thirty-one area, forty-seven thirty-one. Okay, yeah. Hmm. OK, 
Okay. All right, so that trade there was successful. And I'm showing you that 31 area where I was targeting. Um, it's, you know, I was targeting the swing lows there, uh, the, the swings to the upside, the low, the swing lows there. And when price is at now, I knew that it could um, possibly bounce. And this is where I was kind of like, I was talking at this point here that a price broke below uh, 29 and a half area. I'd be looking for a continuation short on a pullback. And that's what you, that was the first part of this, this video recording that you hear or I already have heard. So price has not broke through it yet. And I'm not sure if it, at this point, if it does within this segment right here. But if it breaks below 29 and a half, on a pullback and looking at the four ranges where I was going to enter going short. And uh, let's see what we got here. You know, at this point, price still has not broke below, meaning a candle, that red candle on the 12 range, broke below, closed below um, 29 and a half. It looks like it's getting ready to, of course. And I, I won't just jump into a trade, you know, once it closes, I won't take that trade on a, on a pullback. If it closes below 29 and a half, then I would like to take the trade, you know, on th price pulling back to 31 and a half. 